everybody, and welcome to week two of our Trustworthy Online Bible Study. I'm joined again by Lisa Turkers, who is the author, and Joel Mutamale, who's our Director of Theology at Proverbs 31 Ministries. And this week, we're studying two kings, and I'm going to attempt my best to say their names, but y'all will correct me if not. Rehoboam. Yeah. You got it? I got it? Okay, yeah. one down. Jeroboam. Wow. Oh good. my gosh, you guys. Wow. Okay, I wrote it for yes. Thank you guys so much. Maybe you'll be able to say the name of the kings by the end of the week. We'll see. But this week, we get to see Lisa's teaching video at the end of the week. And Lisa, you are standing in front of a high place. Is that correct? That's is that right. what it's called? Yes. And so I would love for y'all to speak into a little bit about what a high place is for those of us who may not know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's give a little context yeah. first. So last week we talked about Saul, David, Solomon. Yes. So first king, second king, third king in the line of kings. Great. Mm -hmm. Solomon, of course, David's son. David and Saul, not related. not related. So David comes from a different lineage. It's the lineage of Jesse. Mm -hmm. And that obviously is also the lineage that you keep following down all the way to King Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so that's important. Yes. Um, but Solomon's son now is king over all of Israel, Rehoboam. Got it. So Rehoboam becomes king. Rehoboam, I think there's a very pivotal moment in his life where he decides, he has to make the decision if he's going to take the advice of the younger men or the older men. Ooh. And Solomon had spent many years building not only the temple, but also his palace. Palace, palace yeah. And we unearthed the very interesting fact about that. What was the interesting fact? Yeah, he actually took twice the time to build his own personal palace than he took to build the actual temple. Or the yeah, the temple of God. So really, it's unbelievable. Yes, and so <laughs> because the workers were the Israelites, and I think they were from the tribes of uh, Joseph's lineage, right? Yeah, they were the construction workers mm -hmm. and the the ones that are really, um, really they're physically taxed in mm -hmm. having to build so much, and so Jeroboam was one of. Solomon's advisors. <clears throat> so Jeroboam uh, becomes an advocate for the people yeah. and says to Solomon, You've, you're working the people too hard. too hard. And there's a falling out and Jeroboam gets exiled oh. to he Egypt. He runs. Yeah. Egypt always shows up. <clears throat> it's so interesting how okay. Egypt just kind of keeps showing its face every now and then. <laughs> right. So now Rehoboam is okay. Solomon's son. He's in charge. And when he gets the advice of the younger men and the older men, the older men say, be gentle with the people. Your father was too harsh, made them work too hard. Mm. And so if you will be kind and compassionate with them, they will love you and they oh. will serve you. Forever, like they Forever. will be your people. And then he goes, Rehoboam gets the advice of the younger men yeah. and the younger men say, no. <laughs> it's no, 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 don't that. do it. <laughs> yes, you need to be even more harsh with the people and kind of bow up and establish your leadership yeah. by, you know, being even more strict and severe with them. Yeah. And unfortunately, he listens to the younger men. And so there is this great um, moment mm -hmm. where the people basically decide, we don't want Rehoboam as the king. And there's a revolt. Mm -hmm. And so Rehoboam runs. And to honor David, Rehoboam, who is David's grandson, is allowed to still be the king of the southern tribes. Okay. But it's a much smaller Small. section. Mm -hmm. And by this point, Jeroboam has come back oh, from back. Egypt. And now he gets placed by God in the position of being king of all the northern, northern tribes. Wow. And okay. everything is... Fine. So this is where it starts to get a little confusing in our yeah. study because now the kingdom has split. Yes. So we've got the northern tribes and the southern. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Rehoboam is in the south. And there's a nice diagram in Trustworthy too to show that. Yes. The northern and the southern. And that's one yeah. of the reasons we did the diagram because it can get a little confusing. Complicated. Mm -hmm. But Jeroboam now has been placed by God in this position. And uh, he starts to get worried mm -hmm. that when the people go to Jerusalem, which is part of the southern kingdom, which is where Rehoboam is, that their affection is going to turn back to Rehoboam. 
And it's important for the people to go to Jerusalem because that's where the temple is. Yeah, they got to do sacrifice, festivals. That's right. I mean, and these are central... ordained by God mm -hmm. to do these. So these are very honoring of God. But Jeroboam starts to get scared and said, no, oh, I, I don't really want the people to go in, going down there because right. they may see what Rehoboam's doing. They may like him better. They may turn their heart Panic away. Panic and insecurity. Yeah. Yes, and because of his insecurity, instead of taking a step back and saying, wow, God has put me in this place mm -hmm. and I will stay here as long as God wants me here. Yeah. Instead of that, I think he starts to get very enamored with the position that he's been given. Mm -hmm. And so he says, what can I do to keep the people from going down to Jerusalem or the people who still go to Jerusalem? I've got to give them a reason to come back. Mm -hmm. So Jeroboam sets up two alternate places of worship, okay. one in Tel Dan and one in Bethel. And he builds high places mm -hmm. and he sets up golden calves. Which should, you know, send off some reminders of an Exodus story right. to us. Oh, That's right. right. And um, he dishonors God by changing the place of worship, changing the dates and setting up alternate places besides the temple of God for the people to go to because he's more concerned about keeping the, the hearts of the people attracted to him than uh, obedient to God. And so I was very fascinated in this story. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking our guides over in Israel mm -hmm. as we were driving to tell Dan to film this week's video, yeah. Yeah. what is a high place? Because I've always pictured it. Tell me what you've pictured. Like when you've read in the Bible, a high place, what have you pictured? I'm going to be honest, just something that's above the level ground. So okay. like, a, like, a, like a little mountaintop or just like a, something above the people. Okay. So, yeah. And what did you picture before we saw it? Um, I think I just pictured some type of monstrous, massive building object that you would have. I just think of dark, you know. And so I pictured like, almost like a deer stand. I don't know if you've ever seen a deer stand, but I just pictured like this little yeah. wooden structure with yeah, sure. idols hanging down. Oh. And I don't know, like here's the mountain and then you've got little high places yeah. on the mountain. So I yeah. don't know why, it's certainly an elevated structure, but I pictured in my mind is just like this little deer stand thing, yeah. you know? I love that. <laughs> And uh, then when we got there, I remember my God saying, no, Lisa, oh. a high place? It's a stage, a platform, or a pulpit. Oof. Oh. And I remember when she said that, it kind of arrested my heart because that's not at all what I expected. Wow. And sure enough, when we went to Dan mm -hmm. and we saw the high place that's still there yeah. that Jeroboam built, it really is. It has steps that go up and it's this big platform. Mm -hmm. And the important thing to recognize is how that altar or stage platform yeah. pulpit, how it's used mm. determines who it worships. And so if oh, we put things on this stage platform or pulpit that just glorify ourselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm or put on demonstration our distrust of God, which is what Jeroboam did, mm -hmm. then it becomes a high place worshiping, not God himself. Wow. And um, that's very relevant to us today. And you think, oh, well, you know, I'm not a preacher. I don't have a pulpit. I don't right. have a stage. Mm -hmm. But in today's social media world, we all have platforms. Yes. Wow. And yeah. even if you only have a few people that are following you or or looking at whatever it is that you're posting, um, or even if you're in leadership in any way, if yeah. you are influencing another person, you have a platform. It doesn't mm -hmm. require social media, but certainly yeah. I bring that up because I think social media has given everybody mm -hmm. who's on it a platform, yeah. then we have a real responsibility to use that platform in a way that glorifies and honors God. Yeah or to put on display our own areas of distrusting God and glorify and honor ourselves, mm. glorify or honor our political position, glorify yeah. or honor our opinions. And so it became very applicable yeah. to me. Yeah, that's and, so good. And I felt very challenged by it. Yeah. So that's what you'll get to see in this week's video. Wow, stage, a pulpit, or a platform. platform. Mm -hmm. That's good. So you mentioned there was, I feel like there's gonna be a lot of lessons on control and maybe 
giving up control or taking control and trying to manipulate situations in this week's study. But what are some other things that we can um, look out for that are relevant to us today? What other lessons? Yeah, I think one of the one of the things I love about this study, uh, one of the things that Lisa brings out, is also images of the story of the people of Israel, not just in First and Second Kings, but also the retold story from the past. And mm-hmm. so I kind of joked a little bit earlier about these golden calves, but again, it's one of those reminders that, wait, this isn't the first time mm-hmm. a golden calf shows up. And even the language that Jeroboam uses in order to describe uh, these are the golden calves that have brought you out of Egypt. Yeah. And you're thinking, wait a minute, is that the real story? Did the golden calves actually bring them out of Egypt? Who brought? And it goes back to this idea of trust, like and going back to our stories. And that's what was real personal for me of thinking, oh, yeah, Joel, who delivered me <laughs> in my oh, times wow. of distress? And it's easy at times to think, well, you know, I kind of did this or somebody did that, but not to really pay attention to the fact that actually it was God. Mm-hmm. God's story, God's fingerprints are in all of this. And so um, I think that's one of the exciting things that you'll see as the kings and as the people look back on their past story it helps us encourages us to kind of i always talk about as a theology of remembrance building this theology of remembrance of what has the lord done in my life and how should that actually inform how i think about my future and i think for me um it's a reminder to me that fear is a real litmus test Mm. of where my trust is and where my dependence is. Yeah. And so sometimes when we feel afraid, yeah. then um, we have the greatest opportunity to put on display either trusting God or distrusting God. Mm-hmm. And I don't say it lightly because certainly I understand how tough fear can be. Yeah. And I know what it feels like to look ahead and in my human estimation, see nothing but threatening circumstances. Yeah and feel so afraid Hmm. that I start to want to control anything I can control to eliminate and take away some of the sting of fear Mm because fear is really difficult. And so I don't at all diminish the intense feelings of fear, but I do think how can we, even in the face of fear, Mm -hmm. learn to trust God? And I think this week will be very profound for people. Um, And certainly it is a good lesson that we can learn from Jeroboam. And I think also what shocked me is Jeroboam, yes, he built these high places. And yes, he manipulated the people and tried to take control. And yes, he felt afraid. And Mm -hmm. out of that fear Mm -hmm. came his distrust of the Lord. But I can't say that in my estimation, I would have thought about Jeroboam then being the king that all the rest of the kings who are evil are compared to. Yeah. But as we keep reading through these books, the good kings are compared to David and the evil kings are compared to Jeroboam. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. interesting. And when I look at what Jeroboam did, I go, wow, this fear that Jeroboam had that led him to control and manipulate and lead other people away from being obedient Mm -hmm. to God was a much bigger deal to God than uh, what I ever estimated before. So I think it's, um, I think it's really important to address. It's not something to go, oh, you know, <laughs> right. I'm a fearful person. I don't right. want to be considered right. an evil person. <laughs> right. So that's why it's so important to do this week. That's yeah. why it's so important that we study the patterns of distrust okay. mm-hmm. so that we can identify where they're at in our, in our own life. And trust is kind of one of those things that unless we have someone else speaking into us of how to get from here to here, like from a place of distrust to a place of trusting, from a place of fear, control, manipulation to a place of walking with an obedient heart to God, sometimes you've got to have somebody else outline that path for you. And that's what this week's study will do. That's good. And you mentioned having somebody else speak into your situation. Hopefully you listen to maybe the the wise counsel, not the the younger ones. You know, Mm. it's good to have somebody there that might be ahead of you in the faith so they can't speak into your situation. And then 
hopefully take that advice, but I haven't taken it all the time. So I'm excited to study this week. Thank you both so much. And we're excited for you to dig into scripture because we know once you do that um, you will learn it and you will live it and then it changes everything. So let's say the tagline, when you know the truth and, and live, live the, the truth, truth it, it changes, changes everything. everything. Have a good week too, everybody.